Hi, this is Alexis Hasselberger here, Time Management and Productivity Coach, and I am here today with another video about TickTick, one of my favorite task management apps. And somebody had asked me recently, can you do a video for us to show us how you manage projects in TickTick? What are some different ways we can use? And so I have three different ways that you can manage your projects in TickTick, and I wanted to show you all three different ways because, you know, different brains work different ways and, you know, people are going to be able to choose whatever works best for their brain and how they think about things. So the first way that we're going to use is the next action date, keeping the, all the project in inside of one task option. And so we're going to call this one Project X. So if we click into here, what we're essentially doing is putting the entire project inside of one single task. And so what we're doing here is you'll see Project X, that's going to be the name of your project. Because we only have one date field here, and we don't want to have the due date of the project be in that date field, because that's not going to help us figure out when to actually get the different steps done, we're just going to leave that date up here in the task. So we're going to say when it's due so that we know that information. But it doesn't really help us to sort our projects by the due date in order to figure out what we want to get done. So we're going to use a concept that I call next action date to help us determine when we need to do the steps in the project. So you can see here that in the description field, I've just got four tasks here. And these four tasks that we've got here are going to represent whatever the steps of this project is. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to say, okay, this first task, we're going to do it on August 21st. That's today. That's our next action date for this next task. Now, when we're completed with task one, we're going to just check that off here. We can go down into the comments and we can say, you know, completed task one um, or any other notes that we have about what we've done. Maybe it's just that we called somebody and left a message, but then we'll get a running history of what we've done on a task. And then maybe the next step is something that we actually don't have time to focus on or we're not planning to do until next week sometime. So I can go in here. I can change the next action date to Wednesday. You know, that's when I'm going to perform the next action. That's when I'm going to do this task two. And so now I have updated the project and I know that on Wednesday, August 26th, this is going to pop up and I'm going to know that I should be focusing on task two because that's the next action date for this task. Now, here's another way that you can um, use projects and manage your projects within TickTick. So this way is to essentially use subtasks. So it's kind of the same thing. We have this overarching project. Now we can put just the title of the project here in the, the field for the, um, for the name of it. Uh, we can put the actual due date of the whole project up here uh, in the date field if we want to. And because we're using subtasks, and you'll find subtasks right down here at uh, add subtask, now you'll be able to get an entire task and all the associated fields within here. So you can have a bunch of different subtasks here. Each one, you can click into it, and it's going to have their own fields here, their own um, commenting. You can set dates for each one of these, and then you can manage your project that way. So we can click back into it. We can see, and if we're, you know, done with this task for today, we can just click it, and now it goes away. So you can see there that we then have the next action dates for these other tasks in here. Now, one reason you might, you might be thinking, well, this is so much better than um, the first way that I showed you because everything has its own dates, et cetera. One thing that you might run into, however, is that, you know, if things get pushed as things sometimes do, you know, things come up and things take longer. Now, if you need to reprioritize things, you have a lot more dates to edit because you might have way more than just four subtasks. And so you might um, not want to have all those dates in there right away, or you might want to um, just use the other math method that I showed you first. Now there's a third method that I want to show you, and this is to use lists, lists and tasks. So you could create a project, you know, I'm calling this Project Z, under lists. So we have a list called Project Z. And if you go in there, then you'll see that you have just individual tasks within this project. So now if you want to go into the project, you'll see all of the tasks for the project. Um, if you check off a task, you'll see that it's done. If you go into a task, you'll be able to update things kind of like you would for exactly like you would for the subtasks, but you'll have essentially another way to view this here. So there are three different methods that you can use. All of them, you're going to want to use this next action date concept. You're going to want to use the commenting so that you can make sure that to keep track of what you've done. But either one of, you know, any of these will work. And so that is how you can think about managing 
managing projects instead of just singular tasks when you're using TickTick. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions whatsoever or there are different topics you'd like me to cover, please just let me know.